we do damage control? Um, for this, I would want to discuss the triggers for damage control surgery. Um, this is actually from a consensus of 201 trauma surgeons nominated by 232 trauma centers in the first world mature trauma systems of the United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. And yung mga sinagot nila, they compiled it and they looked at what these surgeons were looking into as their triggers for damage control surgery. You have the degree of physiologic insult, you have your injury pattern, and your estimated blood loss. So itong tatlong to, pag nakita nila kahit isa, they would have the quick option to do damage control surgery. Under degree of physiologic insult, meaning malaka, um, in extremis na yung patient mo, defined by systolic BP of less than 90, um, arrest during transport, pero buhay nung nakita ng doktor, and your physiologic markers are deranged. Your temperature is low, your pH is high, so acidotic yung pasyente, and you have clinically or laboratory proven coagulopathy. For estimated blood loss, mind you, these are um, reported by surgeons in mature trauma system. So, isipin mo yung blood loss na trigger nila, 4 liters or administration of more than 10 units of pack RBC. Madami yon. And in our setting, baka hindi mo na kailangang antayin yung ganyan kadaming blood loss. Simply because you know your blood bank cannot produce as much blood as reported or in their system. So, it's very dependent on the resources that you have. And the last will be your injury pattern identified. If you look at this list, ito yung mga very difficult to manage na trauma patient. Yung mga kailangan mo yung itawid kasi surgically, technically difficult to manage. You have your pelvic hematoma that's difficult to access. You have your abdominal vascular injury with associated abdominal solid or hollow organ. Superior mesenteric injury which will put your whole hollow viscous at risk and your pancreatic or duodenal complex injuries. Yung sobrang hihirap na injuries to manage. Sa mga ganong injuries or sa ganong pattern ng mga patients, patient population, gusto natin maaga tayong nagdidesisyon ng damage control. Why? Because we don't want to reach this end game, the lethal triad, the triad of hypothermia, acidosis, coagulopathy. Because when you reach this point, ubus na ubus na talaga yung pasyente mo. And you are looking at a 96% mortality in 24 hours. So you want to cut the process with a damage control surgery before you reach that end game. And on review, the pitfalls of damage control surgery are actually losing time over making the decision for DCS or doing it wrong in the sense na matagal or mali mismo yung process when your patient actually needs the fastest, swiftest control of what's killing him acutely. Ganun ka importante yon. But like any concept in trauma, there are controversies associated with damage control surgery. The first one being cowardice or duwag pag hindi mo natapos yung buong surgery. Um, traditionally kasi gusto mo in one setting, you are able to correct the anatomic disruptions of your patient.
The world moves in real time. So should our healthcare technology. With information needed, decisions to make, and experience to share. Every second counts. Live integrated tele-ultrasound enables real-time communication, remote collaboration, confidence, knowledge, and learning. The first ever integrated tele-ultrasound collaborative platform. Philips Lumify. Integrated tele-ultrasound, powered by React's collaborative platform. Innovation and you. Philips. However, damage control puts the alter alternative decision na hindi kasi kaya ng pasyente mo na gawin lahat sa kanya ngayon because they have a lot of stresses, they, they've endured a lot of, um, of trauma to their physiology, kaya hindi nila kakayanin. And it recognizes na dapat yung management mo is dependent also on the resources that you have. Um, pero lagi ba? In all situations, kaya mo magdises. No, there are requirements also, and not surprising. You don't need fancy gadgets. You can do damage control surgery, even in um, government hospitals, as long as these are present. You do your damage control surgery because you know that there's an available better surgical care. May it be manpower, maybe expertise, maybe kahit nga yung wakefulness human resources as long as there's better surgical care then ang mindset mo gusto kong itawid yung patient ko para mabigay ko pa sa kanya yung better surgical care another requirement is that resuscitation products your blood products your um crystalloids kasi kung wala paano mo siya itatawid damage control surgery is not a stand alone procedure that's why you have to have your resuscitation products because your goal is to resuscitate your patient enough to fight another day. Um, a surgical intensive care unit or kahit expertise to take care of your patients in extremis and the availability of an operating theater. Kasi anytime na hindi sila nag respond to the resuscitation or anytime magkaroon ng problem, then you might have to bring it, them back to the operating room. So without uh, these requirements, then it's very difficult for DCS. Another controversy is that we sacrifice thorough examination kasi nagmamadali. Um, surgical adeptness is very much required in doing your damage control surgery. And for surgeons out there, this is what we've been preparing for in master mastering our maneuvers of exposure during elective surgeries. Damage control surgery requires surgical adeptness, especially in the stressful situation of a trauma patient in extremis. Hindi siya fastest shortcut. You still do the whole thing, but very much in an abbreviated fashion. And the last and most famous um, controversy will be your resistance and overuse. Yung iba, like kanina, ayaw nilang mag-damage control surgery. Yung iba, sobra naman. Lahat na lang ng trauma patients, bukas yung chan. Remember that damage control surgery has a specific population of patients that it will be most um, helpful or useful for. Because we recognize na pag iniwan ko yung chan na bukas, pag dinelay ko yung definitive management, there are morbidities and mortalities associated with it. You have your ventral hernias, you have your enteroatmospheric fistula, you have your infections, your bugs in the ICU that are just ready to attack that open abdomen and the mga ventilated patients, pneumonia. You have long hospital and ICU stays. 
And overall, there's a reduced quality of life even if patients survive your damage control surgery. So, sa dami ng sinabi ko, where do we stand with the use of damage control surgery? Let's put it at this way. Damage control surgery has an appropriate population and situation. Remember the goals. Remember that we are just trying to tide over the patient to fight another day. Instead of thinking of damage control surgery as a surgical shortcut, imagine it's a an exercise of restraint in doing time-consuming anatomic repair sa pasyente na ubos na ubos na na konting additional stress, konting pahabain lang yung OR, hindi na sila magsusurvive. We know, we should know full well that it's our patient's physiology that most affects our outcome. Especially for the surgeons out there, it's not the suturing, it's not the knot, it's not your available resources. It's the patient physiology and our support for it that will keep our patients alive. So, kaya nga very important na yung part 1, damage control surgery, and yung part 2, equally important, is your resuscitation. We need to know our physiologic targets and manage these patients urgently.